Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we meet again, we meet again, I would like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel, and uh, I want us to look at this one, <coughs> this one, faster, faster, so this one, so this is previous question paper that was written on the 1st August 2023, on the 1st August 2023 of Polemica Drawing PSSD N3, so I want us to quickly look at question 2. So figure two shows a tapered lobster backbend. So the, the title of the drawing that we are doing that we are doing today is what it's a it's a tapered lobster backbend. It is a lobster backbend. So uh, let me see is it clear enough? Yes. So use a scale of one to ten to draw the following. So you are required to draw the tapered lobster bed paint using the common central sphere method. Develop the pattern of the segment marked M. <coughs> so the segment that we have to mark, I mean that we have to develop is M. It's not this one, it's not this one, it's not that one. So open the development of the, uh, the development on the line marked XX. Please note that XX is your joint. So we are using our a reduction scale we are using a reduction scale so so that's the very first thing that you have to confirm reduction scale of what <coughs> of one is to ten so let's start now <coughs> so yeah from here till here is that it's supposed to be diameter as far as i'm concerned this is diameter Again, from here till here is diameter. As far as I'm concerned, these are diameters. As far as I am concerned, so it's diameter 100, <coughs> 902. So 902 divided by uh, 02, 2 divided by 10, divided by 10. So simplify it, we are getting. 9.90.2 so we are going to say 90.2 divided by 2 so it's good as if it's going to be 90 divided by 2 which is 45 isn't it which is 45 okay, so I take my drawing compass and open it to 45 <coughs> So 45. So 45. So 45. Did you see this one? 45 there. Then I can come and draw a diameter. <coughs> So I have to think about a space as well. I have to think about my space as well. So I'll just do it like this. So it seems to be big. Even if it's not a full complete cycle. And from there, we must I place in my drawing compass. Because I'm using an A3 drawing sheet. So I don't know if it's going to fit here. and then I draw a faint line like from there I can take this one up this one up so that I can come now and have this one dark from here to the solid you understand which one is this one it's actually this one from here to there yeah. <coughs> Understand. So from here till there is radius. 
770. So if you say 7, 7, 7, uh, 770 divided by 10 is 77, isn't it? So what do you do with that 77? They said from the center, you understand. So I am going to record that 77 from my center. So I come. Where is my 77? And this is 70, 75, 76, 77 is right here. You understand? So from here till right there is 77. So I get my 77. I construct a vertical faint line going up. I want faint line going up. Then from there, what I'm gonna do now? So from here till there 77, which means again from there till there it should be the still same 77. So I can simply place it. I can name this point R, stand for the reference of all the points that I'm about to get. So I place my drawing compass at point R, further extended to the center. So for now I'll just go faint. I'll just go faint, you understand. So, so from here, so from here till there, it's still the same as from here till there, you understand. So once I get there, I can now have this line. Horizontal center line, you understand. Horizontal center line. Then from there, what am I gonna do now? So let's check this is this is supposed to be done with that there is a no let me come. So now this yeah they said this diameter remember I've corrected it's supposed to be diameter diameter 330 so if you say 330 divided by 10 is 33 isn't it so 33 divided by 2 so that you get radius it's what 17.5, 16.5. So now I take my drone dampers and open it to 16.5. 16.5. This is 15. This is 16.5. It's between 16 and 17 on it. So from the year, what I'm gonna do now, somewhere here, I can. And draw diameter 33 and I draw it fit. I draw it fit. There you go. So from here to here is diameter 902, which is this one. 902, this, which is this one converted to a scale. And then this one is diameter 330 converted to a scale, which is 1 is to 10, which is that one. Okay, so from there, what I'm gonna do now, take this one. Take this one. There you go, faint. There you go, faint. So that I can now have this one from here. Duck. Duck. Which one is this one? It's actually, this one from there to there. Already have them duck up now. Then from there. But it's going to happen now. So now I must keep on wiping my T square so that I don't come to deadness. So what I'm gonna do, I'll just extend this horizontal faint line and this horizontal uh, center line faint as well. There you go. Just extend them faint as well. So where they are perpendicular to each other, you understand? So I'm gonna put my 30 millimeter ruler and join that point with what? 
put my uh, uh, point R, which is this one. So there you go. You understand? Why am I doing that? Because we are not told which which one is at this. Uh, 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 this one is at which angle, this one is at which angle, how about this one is at, we are not given their angles, you understand? So that is why I'm doing this, but now let me look at it, which is angle what? Of course it won't be, is it 60? It's not 60, you don't understand. Is it 30? Obviously it's not 30. <coughs> it's angle what? Angle 45, you see that is actually... At angle 45 angle 45 isn't it? so from there I can come back and place my drawing compass at point R further extended to point uh, center which is this one right then from there you understand from there I can come and place it here repeat place it your drawing compass at point R further extended to the center is this one isn't it so now I come and place it at this point now I strike an arc this side and I strike an arc this other side. You understand? Then from there I come, I place it at my center and bisect this axe. And come and place it at this center and bisect this axe. You understand? <coughs> so where they are bisecting each other, I'm going to name this point Roman figure one, that one. Roman figure 2 you understand so let me repeat how did we got Roman figure 1 and Roman figure 2 I am not impressed with my guys can you see my faint lines especially the camera for for okay camera for YouTube so let me repeat how to go to Roman figure 1 and Roman figure 2. <coughs> we extended this horizontal center and the vertical center. Where they are perpendicular to each other is our point, isn't it? So we join that point with our reference, you understand? So where it cutting this one, that we, uh, the center that we actually started with, <coughs> is your point, which is that one. So how, where, how is it going to help you that point? Come back, place your drawing compass at point R. R further extended to the center is this one. Now without disturbing it, you come and place it at this point. You strike an arc, you strike an arc the side. <coughs> you understand? So now to bisect this arc, you come and place it at the center of the bigger one. Bisect the arc. Then you come and place it at the center of the smaller one. You bisect the arc. So now you take your 30 millimeter ruler. You join Roman figure one back to Roman figure Roman figure one back to reference point, which is this one. Hey one. So now come back, you place it at point R, join it point R with what with point with Roman figure two. There you go. Hey one. So from there what do you have now? We are having this one. So now you can come back. Please take your drawing compass. Go back and put it at what now? You have a point there. You have a point there. Place it at point R. Further extend it to that point. That point. So strike an arc, which is that one. You see that is also is also touching that one. So which means I can have this one dark and this one extending the center action. Dark. You understand? Then from there, from there, what is going to happen now? So which means I am having another point right there. So I have, I can decide to say I have a point A here and a point B here. And point C here and point D 
right here and point E right here so it's always simple when you number your work it's always simple when you number your work but if you don't number your work you'll end up being confused to which one is that one which one is that one you understand so it's always simple when we number our work right then from there so i'm not impressed with the camera for Hmm. So from there, what's going to happen now? So let, I'll just extend. Let me take it a little bit down. This side, due to space, uh, I must mind about my space so much. Okay, come this side. Faint line here. Now I want to get the true length. This one faint as well. I'm going to do it faint. Faint as well. So this one, this point, it, it should be good as if it's that A, first derivative of A. Do you see? So that one. So this A is now here, isn't it? So now I can come place my drawing compass here, further extend to this point, which is the radius, isn't it? Now I come and place it here, I mark here, and I mark this other side. So this is part of the construction. So I can have it dark. So the distance of AB in my drain AB supposed to be the same as BC. Supposed to be the same as CD. Everyone supposed to be the same as D back to A. So we've got it correctly. So now what I'm gonna do therefore, so I'm going to say this is my A. I mark this is B, this is C, this is C, this is D, this is E. So I'm going to end at E. So this is B, this is C, this is D, this is E. So after getting that, I can have constructional horizontally. There you go. There you go. You understand. So after that, what is going to happen now? So I can come back to place my drawing compass at point E, further extended to this point, which is the radius of this cycle of this one isn't it yes so now i come and place it here and mark the site and mark the site remember these are face derivative isn't it so i can have it dark There, I construct it like this, and like that. Right. So now we're looking for diameters of the other what. Uh, <coughs> other uh, sphere and so now what I'm gonna do if I place my drawing compass at point first derivative of a, of a till at this point it's good as if I'm getting what it's good as if I'm still getting what I have so there is no need for me 
even to draw this one you can just draw for the sake of actually it's not giving me anything you understand then after that go to b place a drawing compass here at the vertical center let me extend it this half so you have to extend it so that i get the true so now I can place it here till here so a strike this is it so actually it's supposed to be the same which is this one so now I come and place it at B then I draw a cycle After that, I go back. Let me get the exit center line, center point. Is it that one? So now I go come and place it at first derivative of point C. I see is it tally this? Does draw faint? Draw faint. Then after that come and place it at what? At point C and get that then after that one, the last one which is point D point D D. So it goes. Then the last one, which is point E, which is already here, there must understand. So even if you don't do it, it's not a problem. So after that, what I'm going to do, let me divide my circle into two equal parts. Into two equal parts. Start with this one. So I'll decide to have a zero here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is supposed to be in line with three. Uh, ten in line with what? With two, eleven in line with one, zero in line with twelve. You understand? So from there, what is going to happen now? Uh, uh, I am going to complete my front view. We are going to use what a 30 millimeter ruler. So I'm going to join the circumferences. So the the cycle of a cycle a that goes, isn't it? I'm joining it with what with the diameter of what of b the diameter a. So it goes with the diameter of B. So I'm going to 
okay, uh, to uh, draw a line by the name in mathematics they call it a tangent so this tangent that will just touch the circumference of A and B you can see this is diameter B touching with what with diameter A you understand so I've done it this side I'll come and do it this side as well this is diameter B with diameter A That's where the trick is. So there you go. Then now the diameter B with the diameter C. I'm touching the circumferences. That's where it lies actually. That's where you, you it's confusing. You understand? So the diameter C with the diameter B joining the circumferences. There you go. Just this one with diameter C and diameter B. Diameter C and diameter B joining the circumferences. So where they are crossing each other, I have a point. Remember, we started with a diameter A with a diameter B. So now diameter B with diameter C. So where they are crossing each other, I have a point right there. So how about this one? Where is my point? This line goes with this one. So there they are yeah, uh, joining each other. So I have a point there. You understand? So I can draw this one dark. Dark. So this one dark. Hey, what? Then from there, what is going to happen now? So I'm going to join diameter C with diameter D. The diameter C, there, there is the center point of the diameter. See, there is the center point which is point D of this diameter. So you understand. So I'm going to join this one, get the line by the name tangent that will just touch the circumference. Then it goes together with what? To this one. Faint, there it goes. You understand. So this one. The head goes is touching what with what with this one. So where is my point? Is actually right there. How about this one? The head goes together with this one. They they are crossing each other. Hey one. That's where they are crossing each other. So which means that's where my point is. We join diameter C with diameter D. Diameter C with diameter D is that one and that one isn't it in joining with what with diameter B and diameter C which is this one and this one so I've gotten this point so now I cannot have this one dark from here to there and from here to right here Anyone. Then from there, what is going to happen now? So we are going to join diameter T with diameter E. Circumferences. Faint. There you go. So now I have a point right there. There you go. And you can have it dark from here to right there. See now it's coming. 
so where they are crossing each other this one and this other one I have a point there they are crossing each other you understand so I can have it dug from here till here and from here till here <clears throat> so now I can have this one without fear or favor now I can join this one with that one which one is this is this one you understand so this one with that one have it solid then it's this one Come on. and this one with that one so somebody would have thought that it's a this one is actually that one of the time we're joining Roman figure two with Roman figure R, a Roman figure two with point R. You see, it's not. Again, this one you might you would have thought that is that one that is at an angle of that. RS is not. Everyone, even this one you would have thought that is this is Roman figure two with point R. RS is not. You understand. So that's how you're supposed to go about it. So now the center, we are told to put the center, it will be what? It will be this one. <laughs> we are actually done. So you'll be using the word there. Place it in the figure one. To the year. there so now point M which is point M I mean a uh, segment M which is marked M there so it's the one that we're supposed to develop which is the one that we're supposed to develop you understand so it's very it's very simple straightforward now assuming you are given a cone that is being cut it like this how do you develop a cone that is being cut it like this how do you go about it a simple straightforward how do you go about it? Given a cone that is just cut it like this, isn't it? Should be you firstly look forward for <coughs> for your uh, apex point. Let me see. Let's look. Let's get the apex point now of segment point mat A. Mark M, so extend this one and extend that one. <coughs> Understand? Then from there, I extend the center as well. There is my apex point. <coughs> there is my apex point. Do you see it? There is my apex point. It's almost went out of pitch. Which means I'm supposed to take my drawing just a little bit down. But then it's fine. Now, let me get... You know, this one that I am doing it here. It's either you can you can still do it yeah let me see is it going to fit it should be still one and same thing you understand it should be still one and same thing <coughs> if you don't want to confuse yourself you can still take the what the true length of your points and take it this other side and so that you maybe you get your development in this other side you understand it should be still one and same thing so i won't be getting it so i can still do it right here in uh, on top of my what of my front view on top of my front view let me see now how so point <coughs> six is already there goes to my apex point and point five in line with seven once it touch the bottom part of the segment marked m i'll direct it towards to my apex point My 
6.8 goes and 0.4 in line with 8 and 0.3 in line with 9 0.2 supposed to be in line with 0.10 go and point one supposed to be in line with what with point eleven point line in line with eleven <laughs> right so it's good as if this is what we are developing so uh, there you have your what your joint there you have a joint. I'm looking for PSSD textbook. You see this step that you are about to do now. It's actually this step. Actually this step. It was a uh, uh, this segment marked A is good as if it's something that is just like this. How do you develop a cone that is being cut like this? How do you develop a cone? So let's say it was a complete cone. You understand? It was a complete cone. How do you develop? So if it was a complete, ne, it's not cut like this, which means even here on its development, it was going to be close. You understand? So you are told to go to your x x maybe somewhere there. You understand? Then even this one. So that is why you are going to have your x x right there. So the very much important part that you, you have to look at is what is the cutting plane. How is it going to to be? It will be like this. So same applies to what we are about to do now. So we have a six here. We have a five with the seven. So we have a four. With the eight, we have a nine, nine with the three. So that one is what is it's a two with the ten. So that one is a one with the eleven. So the six is right there. You understand? So after that, I'll simply project them horizontally. So that we get their true length. Faint goes. There you go. There you go. The center. So two and one. So after you have that, it's just a matter of what now of using your apex point. Place the green numbers. My drone compass is too small. It is too small. What I'm gonna do now? Mm. <coughs> I am having challenge with my drone compass. So I'm placing at my apex point. Apex point and this is my apex point. Let me see, is it going to reach there? Mm, it's not reaching. Oh. So, guys, I'll try to get the point, I'll try to get the bigger one. So let's make this one part two because I supposed to use what the apex point now. Place the drawing compass at apex point, that one, further extend it to this point. Then you strike in an arc, isn't it? Then you come and place it here, strike an arc, place it here, strike an arc, place it here to be your center, place it here, place it there, place it here. So let me look for a drawing compass that is a little bit big because this one is too small or oh, I was supposed to reduce the scale. So do you see that if I place it at my apex point and 
further extend it this is the biggest that uh, so it's not coming it's not coming so let me look for part two so in part two i'll try to get a bigger drawing compass this is the disadvantage it's actually disadvantaging me today the smaller one i'll try to get money and buy a draw a bigger drawing compass